if you've clicked on the video, you are either on the journey of becoming a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, or you may be exploring the field of data science and machine learning. Well, in this video, I'll give you some pointers in terms of how you can kickstart your journey in machine learning in the year 2024. So without wasting any further time, let's discuss the topic of how I would have learned machine learning in the year 2024. Let's begin. The first and foremost thing that I would have done in order to kickstart my journey in machine learning and data science is start loving mathematics. With all the hype around ChatGPT, Google Bard and the other LLMs, a lot of times what gets shadowed is the internal working of these LLMs which are purely based on mathematics, statistics. So if I were to kickstart my journey in machine learning today, I would kickstart the entire activity by starting off with mathematics. If there is one, one single course that I can recommend for all of you to start your mathematics journey, then there is an amazing course on Coursera by Louis Serrano, where he kind of takes you through the entire aspects of how mathematics that is required for machine learning and deep learning is integrated into the entire, say, vectorization process how you can kind of start learning linear algebra, probability, conditional probability, Bayes theorem for different aspects of machine learning. So if you have to be good with the latest things that are appearing right now, so I'm pretty sure you've started using ChatGPT, Google Bard and the other large language models in your day-to-day -day workflow. If you plan to create solutions using those large language models, Chances are that you have to also understand the nitty gritties of machine learning, deep learning and then create those scalable solutions. In order for you to understand those complex say architectures, your basics in machine learning and deep learning have to be really clear. Again, if you are like beginning your journey in machine learning, then I would highly recommend Andrew NG's course on machine learning, which can be like a good starting point for you where you will learn the basics of machine learning right from classification to regression. Then there is again a specialization by Andrew NG for deep learning. Like the initial part is to start with neural networks, then scale your understanding to natural language processing. Then there are sections on convolutional neural networks, which are say related to images. Then you get sections on RNNs, LSTMs, then attention mechanism. So that is the other course that I would recommend if you're planning to go and understand more about deep learning as well. These are the two fundamental blocks that you'll have to be really good with in order to excel in the field of machine learning. So these are my recommendations that in order to excel in the field of machine learning in the year 2024, you have to be very good with machine learning basics and then deep learning as well. These are the two things that you have to be really good with. Once you attain a good level of understanding of these machine learning and deep learning algorithms, then you can kind of scale up your entire profile and understand more about what is happening in the current industry standards. A lot of you are beginners in this field of data science and machine learning. A lot of you get carried away by all the advances that are happening in machine learning and deep learning. I'm not saying it's wrong to get carried away but it's good to be fundamentally sound in these technologies, which is where you can find the relevant opportunities for you going forward. What I would recommend to all of you is, if you are interested in image related, say data science or machine learning work, then it's high time you start understanding about how diffusion models work. What is a latent space? What are the nitty gritties of how diffusion models work? Once you pass in text as input, how is that converted to embeddings? How does it go to the latent space? How is an image generated? All of these are fine, intricate details that you have to be aware of if you plan to become like a successful machine learning engineer in the field of image processing. On the other hand, with respect to natural language processing, there's a lot that's going on, right? Uh, every week, every month, you have new large language models that are beating the benchmark. Uh, there are models, there are open source models that claim to beat, say, GPT-4, Google Bard, and the other models that are there. So the idea is rather than getting carried away by benchmarks and understanding those model performances, it is very critical to understand what transformers are, what attention mechanism is, what is multi-head attention, what is positional encoding, how are the embeddings generated in the transformer networks, are they trainable, are they non-trainable, 
there are so many things so if you keep understanding transformers better you will be able to appreciate the large language models in a better mechanism so my only request or suggestion to all of you out there who want to be really good with respect to machine learning basics that you have to really understand the basics of how these amazing architectures are built upon you have to maybe you may not know the entire architecture of every model out there but knowing the basics and knowing the basic building blocks of all these models would really help you excel and understand the field better so my recommendation to you is keep yourself grounded in terms of understanding the basics of these very catchy models be it the large language models or the image captioning models and then build upon your say basic understanding and then understand the complex architectures that are there a lot of machine learning engineers have this misconception that once you create a model you're not supposed to deploy it well that myth is no longer existing in the industry whatever models you create it's become like a norm where you go out and you deploy the models until and unless there are teams specifically created in the organization for deployment so my next recommendation for all of you is start learning the basics of model deployment you can start with git and github how do you push the code all of that is extremely important how do you save your model how do you utilize or how do you cache your model all of these are small nitty gritties that you can kind of explore and learn this is like a small building block that you should basically learn and move forward in your machine learning career the next thing that you should also learn about is various python based uh, applications that you can develop a lot of times your models are not stand alone models you have to create apis you have to create endpoints which is where then you can learn about fast api flask and the other web applications uh, that are available using python so this is my recommendation start learning about ml ops as a practice where you can kick start the journey by git github the other piece if you want to automate the process or if you want to create like a simple ml ops pipeline then you can use github actions as well uh, these are some of the things that you can start exploring there are different exams so i recently gave an exam on github actions as well you can check out the video in terms of how my experience was but uh, learning and understanding the journey you may not be required to kind of implement the entire ml ops pipeline by yourself in the organization maybe there are parts which you are responsible for but having an in depth understanding of the entire workflow will definitely help you progress in your career going forward so my recommendation is that you should not shy away from the ml ops technologies that are there you should learn about deployment you should learn about production environment what is a testing environment how do you push code to git github how can that be automated in terms of pushing the entire new say changes into a production how can you then perform testing as well all of these are small little things that you can kind of learn going forward so this is my recommendation start learning about ml ops in your say data science or machine learning journey which will kind of help you progress going forward as well then i want to finally discuss about the final points of how you can become a better machine learning engineer in 2024 uh machine learning data science is all integrated to business how you present your solution to business is where your communication skills come into picture so start learning about the art of communication in terms of how you can best showcase your results to the business stakeholders how you can create really appealing dashboards either using python or if you are comfortable with say software such as clickview or tableau you can basically choose any that your organization approves of but you can also create good appealing visualizations using python so be good with communication in terms of presenting your results then the other piece where you can also excel is you should be very good with sql i think structured query language or sql is that skill that not a lot of people talk about it's like an understated solution that you already know and it's something that you should be good with if you are a data scientist or a machine learning engineer so technically you should have good sound knowledge of sql as well uh you should also be able to understand business i think a lot of machine learning engineers go wrong in the approach wherein they only think of the technical aspect of the solution without understanding the actual implementation and the business impacting part of the solution 
which is where it's very important for a machine learning engineer to appreciate the business impact that a solution would create. I've tried combining multiple factors into this particular final point, but the idea is get your basics right in terms of where the solution would reside in the organization structure, how much of an impact it would create. If there are solutions or if there are technologies that you don't feel are that relevant to your role, then you're wrong. I think solutions or technologies such as SQL, technologies such as data visualization or the bigger aspect of what data visualization is, all of these are key metrics to give indication to the business that your solutions are making an impact to the business, eventually making them money, which is where you end up making money in form of your salary. So these are some of the major pointers that I've tried covering in this particular video in terms of if I go back in time and if I start my journey today in data science or machine learning, how I would start my journey in 2024 and what I would have done if this is the year where I start learning machine learning and data science is what I've tried to present in this particular video. I hope that this video has been beneficial to you. If you have friends that are trying to understand and if they are trying to make a transition to machine learning or a data science role, then please feel free to share this particular video with all of them. And if you like such content that I create on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos that I create on data science, machine learning, generative AI and the other technologies. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you.